what Ridley Scott's Napoleon gets wrong about war. I'm just a defense analyst, so I'll leave a proper critique of Ridley Scott's new blockbuster biopic Napoleon to the many reviewers who have already disparaged it. I, for one, found it to be a lukewarm melange of battle scenes and romantic vignettes, leaving me with neither a sense of the man Napoleon Bonaparte the bicorn hat soldier turned emperor of the French nor a feel for the age of upheaval he so much defined. For a grand piece of historical fiction from the director of such masterpieces as Blade Runner, Thelma and Louise, and Black Hawk Down, the film curiously fails to entertain. My perspective on Napoleon is a different one. Scott's film stands in a long line of movies, novels, and even history books that have given the world an entirely wrong view of how wars are fought and even more importantly, how they are won. And that matters, because the mythical idea of war embedded in Napoleon and so many other works has become so widespread in our culture and discourse that it ends up informing actual decisions about actual wars. Let's call it the decisive battle myth. Napoleon, with its focus on famous battles such as those of Austerlitz and Waterloo, perpetuates the dangerous idea that wars are decided by great and bloody clashes. This obsession is as old as there have been written accounts of history, but in popular culture in the English-speaking world, the myth can be traced back to the 1851 publication of the 15 decisive battles of the world, from Marathon to Waterloo, which helped kickstart an entire genre of works focusing on battles supposed to have single-handedly changed the course of history. In film, think of The Longest Day, Midway, and Stalingrad, in books, the list of battle histories and battle fiction is too long to contemplate. The genre even plays in counterfactuals, the 1993 movie Gettysburg, based on Michael Shaara's novel The Killer Angels, suggests that the South could have won the US Civil War had the Battle of Gettysburg gone the other way. No matter what these works have taught us to think, the decisive battle is a myth. Wars between major powers are not decided by great battles but by attrition of soldiers and materiel, which in turn is determined by such things as force size, logistics, production, and technology. Battles, large and small, are important only to the extent to which they accelerate attrition and wear down the other side. Yet the myth of the decisive battle the idea that an adversary can be defeated in one big and bloody but short engagement remains powerful. It's also dangerous, because it affects not only ordinary moviegoers but military and political leaders as well. In other words, the very people deciding whether to start and how to fight a war.